In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a click to reveal with overlay slides. I'm Paul Wilson and I make YouTube videos about e-learning, specifically Adobe Captivate. If you like what you see here today, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this video, and by all means, share it with your e-learning buddies. I get inspiration from a lot of different sources. In this case, I saw a different project that was using overlay slides, and it reminded me of the click to reveal widget in Adobe Captivate 12. And I thought, gee, I wonder if I could make a click to reveal using overlay slides. So I spent a few hours working on this, and I'm gonna share the results with you here today. Okay, before we start developing this interaction, let me just show you a little bit about what I have here in this project here. So on this slide here, the first thing I have is really just a standard paragraph block. I've made this dark gray background and converted my text to white. In the middle here, I have a very simple image grid, which you would of course find from the media blocks icon, it's right here. All I've done is enable just the caption, change the font a little bit, and we have our image as well. We don't have the subtitle. I haven't added a button or a card or anything like that. I did choose one of the design options, the image grid square here. I just thought the rounded corners on the images was just a nice touch. I've got a background on this entire slide, which is just an image that I found in the assets library. The bottom here, of course, is a button block. Nothing special here. Two buttons spaced uniformly across the slide here. The only thing I've done to change these buttons is I disabled the selected state for the button, but I did enable the, the disabled state. Enabled the disabled state. I know that's confusing. But mainly for this next button here, because I want the button to be disabled when you first arrive on this slide. Once you complete the interaction, it will be enabled and learners will be able to move forward in the course. I added a blank slide just before and after this interaction so that we can test that. I'm also going to keep my play bar on screen. Normally you would shut it off if you're going to use forced navigation like this, but I want you to see and of course be able to navigate from these blank slides if necessary here. This slide, of course, has some slide audio, which you can see if I open up my timeline and expand the slide itself, you'll see that I've added some text-to-speech down there created with well-said labs. And I've purposely left some space at the end here because I'm going to need that. Each of the overlay slides are pretty straightforward here. All I've done with these is added, of course, a paragraph block. We've added the body, the button, and the card to give it that effect. The background of this slide, though, is a solid fill where I clicked on the icon here and set the opacity to 0% or the transparency so that the alpha was set to 0%. So you'll see through this when I use it as an overlay. It's kind of a nice effect. Each of these, of course, has slide audio as well, and you could even go so far as to add closed captions, not only for the initial three-button slide, but for each of these overlays as well, making this, I think, a better solution than the built-in click-to-reveal that's available in the widgets blocks here. The disadvantage of the widget blocks presently is that you cannot add audio to each of your nodes, or in this case, overlays, like I'm going to do, which gives my solution uh, a bit of an advantage over the click to reveal. It does take a little bit more work to build, but you know, depending on your project, it could be worth it. So let's get started here. The first thing I'm going to need is a variable. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my window dropdown and select variables. I'm gonna click the plus icon to start creating a new variable. I'm gonna call this slide 02 underscore visited, just cause this happens to be slide two. And I wanna keep track of whether I've completed this interaction or not. 
This is going to be a true false variable. So I'll select true false and its default value will be false. Go ahead and press create to create that variable. And you can click outside the variables window to close the variables window. Now I need to add a bookmark, my first of four bookmarks actually, on slide number two. I'm going to click on the seven second mark because it's just a little bit after my audio here. And in the swim lane for bookmarks, you'll notice that if I hover over that area, I get a little plus diamond icon. I'm going to press that and it gives me an opportunity to name this. I'm going to call this after audio. Press enter to take that in. And uh, if you've got the interactions properties inspector open, you'll see it there with no action associated with that. For this first one, I'm going to select an action of pausing the timeline. Very simple and straightforward. Click done. And now I can select the eight second mark where I'm going to add the first of my overlays that represent each of the click to reveal items here. So let's click the plus icon in the bookmark swim lane here and we'll call this one analysis. The action for analysis will be found under more and we're looking for add overlay and we'll select our blank number two here or our third slide here and click on that and press done. And you'll notice that when you do that, the slide kind of gets tucked up underneath slide number two, it kind of becomes part of the same grouping, if you will, and has this icon next to it to represent that it is an overlay slide now. You will no longer be able to navigate to this without first using slide number two here. Let's go ahead and click on the nine second mark and repeat that process for the second of these items. Uh, we'll call this develop and we'll click on the action and set that to add overlay and we'll use our second overlay slide. Last, we'll do the 10 second mark. I'll go ahead and add the icon for the bookmark there and we'll call this one launch. The action for launch will be to click on more here and we'll scroll down until we see add overlay. We'll add that and our third and final overlay is now added there. So now what we need to do is click on each of our images and set an action to jump to their particular bookmark or overlay, if you will. So let's start off with the first one here. I'll click on add an interaction. The trigger will be, of course, click tap. We'll click on more and scroll down until you find jump to bookmark and we'll select analysis for the first one here and press done. Next, we'll select our second item here, add an interaction, click tap, more, scroll down until you find jump to bookmark, and we'll select develop as our bookmark to jump to. Press done. And our third, of course, will take us to the launch bookmark. So click tap, more, Scroll down until you see jump to bookmark and then select launch and then done. Now let's click into the scrap area here to make sure that there are no objects selected. I'm going to continue to add another interaction or action. This is going to be a slide level interaction. So I will click on the plus icon next to slide interactions here and I'll choose slide enter. This is a conditional set of actions that I want to run each time I arrive on this slide. So let's click on slide enter and we'll select conditions. And this will be based on the value of our variable that we've created. Slide 02 visited. So I will select that. And if it is equal to a value of false, press save. We will, under the more section, disable our next button. Scroll down a little bit, press next, and then done. Okay, you can see that down here. We'll just leave that as it is, it's fine. 
we do need another slide level interaction. This is going to look at the condition of whether we've clicked on all three of our buttons here. So let's click on the slide interactions plus icon here. We'll choose objects clicked and I'll choose my three images. Press next. The first thing we're going to do is going to be found under the more set of actions and we're going to assign our variable, our true false variable, a value of true. Press done. Now we need to scroll down a ways until we find our objects clicked three here. And we're going to add another action to that. And that's going to be to enable our next button and press next and then done. So that pretty much takes care of all the interactions that we need on slide number two. Let's visit the first of our overlay slides here and select our continue button. What we want to have happen when we click on the continue button is we want to click on more and we want to jump to bookmark after audio where it will pause and wait for us to press another overlay button. Do the same thing for this one here after audio and then done. And then our third overlay, we will jump to bookmark after audio and then done. For these continue buttons, I would recommend that you disable the selected state. It really isn't necessary here. And I think at that point, we'll be ready to preview this project and see how it works. So let's go ahead and preview. Press each image to learn more. Once you have explored this interaction, press the next button to proceed. So here we go. You can see my next button is disabled no matter how many times I press it. We won't be able to leave here. Of course, I did leave the play bar on the screen just for our testing purposes here today but you would normally turn it off if you were gonna utilize something like this force navigation here. Let's go ahead and press each one of these, these items. When performing a needs analysis and planning the creation of your online course, you will need to identify your target. And you get the idea there. So I've clicked on the first one, second one. When creating your content and developing your online course, you will need to gather content by collecting relevant. And the third one. When testing, Revising and launching your online course, you will need to pilot test with a small group of employees. And so there gives you an idea of how this interaction works. Now the next button is available. If I do go to the next slide and decide to come back to this interaction. Press each image to learn more. I can, of course, visit this interaction again. I'm not forced to do all the clicking I did before in order to navigate away from it. That's what that little slide level interaction created and allowed us, allows us to only force visitors to complete this interaction the first time they arrive on this slide. So additional visits to the slide, if they want to explore this again, they can, but you know, they can always press next and move forward without having to click all three of the items a second time. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.